So if you were going, if you were, I mean, obviously you are a young person, but if you were a younger person, <laughs> uh, what would you be, apart from data, what would you say is a future-proof job? Well, future-proof's a big word. I, I prefer to, I, I tell people you can't really future-proof your life because stuff happens to everybody, but you can try as best you can to be future-friendly. Um, I think I'd be looking to do a job that involves a high level of empathy because listening skills, caring skills will be in even greater demand hmm. in the age of AI than they have been before. Empathy is the one thing machines can't do because empathy requires that shared human experience, something by definition a machine can't have. So anything to do with certain kinds of education involves a lot of empathy skill, mental health care, health care, palliative care, all of those things. I think I'd be looking for some sort of job, whether it's uh, psychology, um, counselling, that brings a level of empathy into play. And there are plenty of other jobs I'm not thinking of off the top of my head right now that fit that description. That would be one thing I'd be doing. Another is to study ethics. I've, I've said to students, if you're in university and you have any interest at all in something like philosophy, start studying ethics now, which is a branch of philosophy, because every major company that uses AI, which is going to be every major company, will be looking for a professional ethicist they can refer to to help them make sense of the change, to help them get a, a sense of what's right to do with this technology, what isn't right. That's a good point. And how do yeah. I apply that? Yeah. What about my job? Is that safe? I think the human side of what you do is very safe. I gave a lecture not that long ago in Australia to uh, radio uh, presenters and personalities and there's a lot of automation going on, obviously, just as there is in television, in TV studios now. We have robot cameras yeah. in uh, in some of the radio streaming platforms now. It's all done through automation. There's hardly a human being in the building. But I think what you have going for you is what a, a good journalist has going for them, which is that we trust human beings to tell us stories that affect human beings. Mm. It's a lot harder to trust a machine if the story is something that really impacts a human being. I wouldn't want to listen to an AI reporter talking to me about what's happening in Ukraine, for example. Yeah. I know people in Ukraine. I want to know how a human feels in that situation. So I think in that respect, your job is safe. Because years ago, of course, there was Max Headroom, wasn't there, who was the AI generated way before its time uh, TV presenter. And everyone's going, oh, that's it. We're all done. We're all finished. And what about a futurist in the future, Mal? Have you got a future in the future? Yeah, I think I think futurism is uh, is here to stay. I think AI has some advantages over human beings when it comes to predicting the future. For one thing, it can analyse much larger pools of data. Prediction's all about establishing patterns, isn't it, based yeah. on current shifts and then projecting those forward. Now, an AI can predict, uh, can, can read the data sets much more quickly than we can on a much bigger scale. It can adapt its thinking more quickly than humans can. The advantage we have as human beings, again, is empathy. We can empathize with other humans. And let's face it, human choice that shapes the future in large part is driven by emotion as much as reason. Mm. And you can't find emotion within data. It doesn't exist. So we have that advantage over AI. And I think also for the present time at least, we're more aware of our biases than AI is. That might surprise some people, but AI carries the biases of its programmers, mm. the people who decide what they're going to train it on, what data they're going to feed it. These people carry their prejudices into the machine. And we as human beings at least can be made aware when we're prejudiced. And we can adapt and our prejudice we can adapt. as well. Yeah. Yes. We're capable exactly. of going, oh, I see what you mean. Yes, now I agree with you, which an AI wouldn't be able to do. Well, it finds it hard because uh, until it can come across an alternative data set yeah. and train on that, it finds it hard to shift.